wait, now what? This is where the scrub book has failed you. Okay, if you, uh, <laughs> if you have an updated version, there is one in here where everybody wants to play that next break. What's that cool sound? And here's the problem in the original one, it ain't in here. It even surprised me because I could have sworn it was, but it's been a while since I opened this for myself. In order to get that nice, cool, bendy sound up the neck, what we call the 10th fret choke, okay? You're going to have to go all the way over here. The first iteration of it that's in the back tablature is actually in the ones from Rogue Blues, okay? Now, how do we tackle this sound? And what you're probably looking for is... Alright, so how do we get that sound? It's actually more simple than you think, okay? But there are a couple basic tricks to it to make sure it sounds really, really nice. First thing, the right hand is deceptively simple. It is the same Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll that we've been playing before. You can get by with it just fine. Just hold your finger down. You want to hold actually your strongest finger, okay? I've seen people choke with their index. There's nothing wrong with that. I've seen people, the majority of people, choke with their middle finger. Nothing wrong with that. Some people choke with their ring, okay? And if you're really, really flexible, there's even a couple Scruggs chokes where you have to choke with your little finger sometimes. It all depends on what you can do. It's perfectly fine, okay? Now, personally, I like to use my middle finger. And all you need is just that double hammer, that Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll out of your right hand, okay? And you're gonna choke every time you touch that second string. Finish over here where they call it the 989 or the the the, uh, <laughs> the middle neck E minor. This is also a nice G chord structure to open up your fingers for a couple notes. Okay, so you're going to have this 10th fret choke, Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. Finish on 989. Okay, you probably noticed right there. I didn't drop my thumb like I should have for the, the double hammers, right? Both are acceptable, okay? You can play or you can do what's more traditional Scrug style, which is, if you look over here where he likes to play a lot of them, he asks only for that choke. And I believe it's just to really punch it out and to illustrate it properly in your plan, okay? Ralph Stanley's plan is notorious for this, okay? Because it's one of those favorite things to do, and everybody called it kind of like the mountain sound when it comes to Stanley style picking. So if if Carter were to come in the microphone, he would just sing something like uh, like Sharecropper's Son, where it's, Mama's got the finger and baby suit too. Papa's uptown, so nothing just out of prison. You hear it right in the middle of all of his phrases, okay? Because it's really nice, convenient, convenient. It only takes one finger to do, and all you got to do is just find that nice little reference dot or that reference marker right there on the side of your fretboard, okay? Now, a couple tricks when it comes to playing really, really good bends. You can theoretically bend any note on any instrument, any stringed instrument. You can play plenty of these things, okay? A little bit more modern, okay? Or you can play even some of the stuff that Ron Block does. You can bend a lot of different notes, and there's plenty of other videos that I'm going to make for those, okay? But we're just going to focus on this 10th fret one because it's the big one. Now, generally speaking, it's easier to bend in between or at the midpoint of your instrument where the string is not going to fight against your finger, okay? What I mean by that is if you're trying to play a nice little, uh, say you want to play this third fret choke right here. It's actually quite difficult to do because there's only this much to travel to fight against that nut up here. If you want to choke down here, eh, you have quite a bit of quite a bit of space to the bridge. But generally, this right here is going to be your midpoint, 
it's really nice and easy just to get your finger on and just push it and move it okay now that said there's a couple things that are traps when it comes to learning how to bend these notes okay what you want to do is you want to bend and release okay some people will release quick nothing wrong with that some people and my personal preference i like to bend slow so i like to drag them out as long as i can because i think it sounds a little bit better personal preference okay this is artistic interpretation second of all another trap a lot of people will bend and they'll just keep it there that's not it, it all right when you bend these notes or you choke these notes as Scruggs references you are changing the pitch of the note that you are changing okay so if that's a regular A note and I choke it up that would be considered a quarter choke because I moved it just a quarter sharper on the scale okay if I choke a little bit further that's what's called a half choke it's in other words it's a half step so you can check these quickly if I have an A and I want to hit a proper half choke it should move it half a step up to a B flat which would be this note right here You can have hole chokes and this is where it gets kind of fun so a hole choke don't worry you're not going to break strings you can bend these strings pretty far in fact i can take and it's i know it might be hard for you to see but i can take and i can move this string all the way up under two strings behind it that's a hole choke One trick to it make sure that these strings right here if you are going to choke and choke hard make sure the strings climb up your fingernails you don't need these getting up caught up on your fingernails and then getting all finger tied or who knows what's going to happen okay but don't be afraid to send it up under the other strings there's nothing wrong with that at all okay because when it comes to playing we're not going to play that third string right there anyway okay so don't really matter if i touch it or not just make sure you keep your finger down so that way you get a nice clean bend and it rings out nice and even okay you don't want to take your finger off the string you definitely don't want to take the string off the fret one good way to practice is just what I'm doing right there nice bend and release just one note and make sure you can hear it ring throughout your whole instrument that way you'll know you've done it right okay now uh, electric guitar trick is if it's kind of difficult for you to do it with one finger or if you haven't been playing a while and you don't have those nice little grooves in your calluses on your fingers you can use two fingers don't let anybody tell you that you can't okay so if you need a little bit of extra help bending a string there's nothing wrong with two fingers to help split the work between them okay so I've seen plenty of guys use both and I'm even guilty of that if it's really really hot and it might be like two in the morning it might be four o'clock in the afternoon on stage and your hands are sweating really bad and they're about ready to slip right off and you don't want to make it go or you don't want it to pop off your couch when you're bending so you use two fingers just to make sure you get it right okay so again bends the nice little foggy mountain breakdown up the neck or any Ralph Stanley style bends use that foggy mountain breakdown roll and all you have to do is just bend on the tenth that's all there is to it